Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today I'll be talking about wiring speakers in parallel and in series. And I won't be just talking about hi-fi speakers, I'll be kind of talking about car speakers as well, because I know a few people like who've got cars, these old cars or you know custom cars or, or whatever, uh, that when I wire up some extra speakers in the car, how would they go about it? Um, the question's come up really. Someone asked me uh, a question after posting the video about the K a 3700 amplifier by Trio. Uh, that's only got one set of speakers at the back. How would they wire a second set into that? So I thought well, yeah, it's a good idea. I'll stick a, a video up of uh, you know showing a couple of ways of wiring up speakers uh, and just things to look out for really when doing it. So probably the easiest way, you know, going back to that KA, I will cover car speakers as well, but going back to that KA amplifier, it's just got the one set of speakers on the output. Uh, a quick and easy way, I suppose, uh, but gonna cost you like, probably 15 quid something like that. So get a speaker box like this. This is a speaker select switch box, which you could uh, wire your amplifier, the output of that amplifier into this. Then you could have four sets of speakers theoretically with switches on. So you could have one set, two sets, or even four sets on at once, depending on the uh, impedance of them speakers, which we'll come to a bit later on in the video. So that is one way of doing it. Obviously you're gonna cost you money there using a speaker select switch box, which I'll put a link at the top. If you want to go and watch that video, there's a few ways of actually using one of these. And it comes in handy for me when I do all these reviews, etc. Okay, we're going to just talk about the uh, impedance rating of your amplifier, something to check before actually adding any extra sets of speakers to your system. So if we have a look at the back of this amplifier here, for instance, now this, set, this takes two sets of speakers, two pairs of speakers, system one and system two, as you can see on the back. Now it's saying there, if you're gonna use system one, just one set of speakers in system one, you can have a pair of speakers that are rated four to 16 ohms. And the same if you're just gonna you know, run it off a of system number two, and just put it in number two and press two on the front of your amplifier, um, you can run them four to 16 ohms as well. But what it's saying there is, if you're gonna run two sets of speakers, i.e. push the buttons in for speaker set one and two, uh, them speakers have got to be between 8 and 16 ohms that you're using. So, uh, you know, don't have an 8 ohm set of speakers on one channel and a set of 4 ohms on the other channel and press them buttons in because, uh, you know, it's, it's probably, it could do a little bit of damage to your amp, you know, depending on how loud you have it, etc. So if you're going to have two sets of speakers with an amplifier, make sure both sets are 8 ohms each or above. Now we're going to have a look at the uh, Trio amplifier, the amplifier that I've done a little video earlier, and this is what's raised this question in this video. Now if you look at the back of this, as you can see, it's just one set of speakers, and it says that them speakers be, can be rated between 4 and 16 ohms, so it's just one pair of speakers you can connect to this amplifier. Now the question is, can I connect extra speakers to this amplifier? Well yes, this, you can do, and this is be pretty much the same if you had a car head unit, a car amplifier, that just had a similar output like this, just uh, one set of speakers, a left and right channel. Uh, do check on the back of your amplifier in the instruction manual, etc. what is the lowest impedance that you can uh, put on it, and you know what is the highest as well, because there's a couple of different ways of wiring up these speakers, which I'm gonna go with now. All right, okay, I don't wanna get too delved in and make the video too long. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible. There's quite a few things to take into consideration. If, for instance, you're gonna set up, I'm gonna do an instance indoors, but this is gonna be the same with the car. If this is the back of the house, so to speak, and that's the front of the house. I want to set here, a pair of speakers here and a pair of speakers there. Just pretend this is your car, this is the front of the car, and that's the back of your car, if you're looking you know, to do your car rather than your indoors hi-fi, so to give you an idea what I'm actually talking about. Um, the best thing is really is to get two pairs of speakers exactly the same make, exactly the same sensitivity, exactly the same impedance. It's gonna make life a lot easier, but you know, some people may have a set of speakers like by Morgan Short, for indoors or Pioneer for the car, etc., and a different pair for the rear or the front of the house or the back of the house that you know, maybe a Celestial Ditton or another Make Sharp or something for the car, something like that, anyway. Now, these speakers hopefully are going to be the same ohmage. You want them, you know, if you can have them say that the, the impedance are eight ohms, you don't really want to set a speakers where the impedance of one of them is four ohms and the impedance of the other pair is eight ohms because this is going to make a bit of a difference depending on how you wire them up. For instance, just going to touch on it very, very briefly. If you had, for instance, a set of speakers or a pair of speakers that are four ohms, and you've got another pair of speakers that are eight ohms, they will sound different. We're going to take these speakers at exactly the same sensitivity. They're both 90 dB sensitivity, both sets of speakers. So it's not, I will come to sensitivity in a minute, if I can say it, that is. 
Um, right, okay, so you've got a pair of four ohms and you've got a pair of eight ohms. Now, if you wide these up in parallel to the amplifier, your red unit, your, that, that uh, trio amplifier I showed you earlier, uh, if you wide them up in parallel, the four ohm speakers would sound louder than the eight ohm speakers. That's in parallel. But if you swapped them the other way around and wide them up in series, the eight ohm speakers would sound louder than the four ohm speakers. So this, you know, this is going to kind of cause a bit of a mismatch here. Uh, you know, especially if you want the sound to be balanced. You know, if you want the sound to be loud at one end of the room or one end of your car than the other, that's going to be fine. But there will be a difference there. So something to bear in mind there. So that's got the wiring two sets of speakers with different impedance together in parallel and series, hopefully like sorted out. Uh, now you've, you've got to say you've got this sensitivity where they, you know, I'm going to keep it very simple. They put like a voltage, you know, a, a certain amount of wattage, etc., into the speaker and a, a meter or so, they measure it with a dB meter and they say how much sound is actually coming out of it. So, um, you know, one may be 90 dB and the other one may be say 87. So there will be a difference in the volume coming out of that speaker. Now, as a general rule, I've been looking at the internet, etc. Uh, a three dB difference is quite noticeable and they say that that is uh, double the sound intensity. But because it's double the sound intensity, it doesn't mean it's double the volume. They say a 10 dB difference between a set of speakers would be double the volume. So just something to bear in mind there. Uh, try and keep them matched or near enough, as close as possible. If they're just one dB out, you're probably not gonna notice that much of a difference, but three dB can be you know, a bit noticeable, which you know, when I put my hi-fi speakers on, one's rated at 87, one's rated at 90. You can hear the difference there, there is a difference. So that's something to bear in mind now. Now, like I say, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of uh, wiring these up now. Okay, like I said, before I show you this wiring, just very, very quickly, just come back here to make sure I get this point in. Best to have them both the same, but like I say, not everyone's got two sets of speakers or two pairs of speakers, exactly the same sensitivity and the same ohmage. So just bear in mind, you know, if you haven't got them the same, you know, a uh, higher sensitivity speaker will sound louder. And you know, if that one's four ohms and the other one's eight ohms, and you've got the other balancing act of wiring them in parallel and series, one being louder than the other. So all to bear in mind that, you know, if you're gonna wire up your house or your car, and they're not matched that you know it could be hard for you to get the sound balance right if you want them to be all the same level i mean not everyone wants them to be the same level but you may want to get it set up so it's exactly the same and you're going to get one set of speakers four ohms another set eight ohms different sensibility sensitivity and you're going to put them in the car wire them up and you're going to think well this speaker is a lot louder at this end than it is down the other end and that hasn't really accomplished what i wanted so just something to bear in mind there Okay, now we're going to get onto the wiring diagrams. Uh, so the first way I'm going to show you is how to wire just a normal set of speakers, just so you've got the run of the mill how this video is going, how to wire up a normal set of speakers. This is just a stereo set of speakers uh, and how they would be wired up. So here's the video there. Right, as you can see here, I've got the car audio on the left hand side with the left and right hand speaker of the car audio and the ohm hi-fi on the right hand side with the left and right speaker. Uh, the top, as we go back up to the left hand side, the car audio, you've got the left speaker and the right speaker, and down the bottom of it, you've got the amp speaker out. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the connection here, uh, if this was like a car audio. So let's start this one rolling. So uh, what we'll do, we're, there's the bottom there, there's your amplifier out, your red unit out of your car unit or whatever it is, and it could be your main amp, etc. We take the positive on the right channel and connect it to the positive of the right speaker. And then we take the negative of the right channel and connect it to the negative of the right speaker and we're going to do the same the negative of the left channel to the left speaker and we're going to connect the positive of the left speaker output of the amplifier to the left speaker so that there'll be a normal setup there for your car audio so we go over to the ohm hi-fi and we're pretty much he's going to do the same here we're going to connect the positive of the right channel to the positive of the right channel speaker and the yeah, output your amplifier there go and see the the negative there your right channel going to the negative of your right speaker a negative of the left hand side output going to the negative of the left hand speaker and the positive of the left hand output your amplifier going to the uh, positive of your left hand speaker oh my fi so that'd be a typical setup there so just you know very basic we'll run through that again it's just your left hand side is the car audio it's the left speaker connected to the left channel the right speaker connected to the right channel and your own hi fi there. Uh, the left speaker connected to the left hand side output of your amplifier and the right hand side speaker connected to the right hand side 
output of your amplifier. So that's the basic setup of a car audio and a hi-fi audio. So that's a normal set of two speakers, like a pair of speakers, one going to the left side of the amplifier, one going to the right hand side of the amplifier. Now to make this less complicated now, because we're gonna start wiring up in parallel and series, I'm just gonna do the left channel only. Now don't forget these wires that I'm talking about in these videos, you're gonna see them separated, i.e. but they usually you know, come in a cable, something like this, where one maybe would be red or be a ridge on it or something to that, you know, that's the positive, and the other side would be the negative. But in this case here, uh, hopefully you can see that. I'll take a picture of it there just to show you. It's a cable there with a red stripe going down one side. Uh, and like I say, that'd be a twin cable. So when I'm showing you on this video, I've actually split this cable, these wires, and I've just got you know the positive here going to one side of the speaker, say the positive, and the negative here going to the other side. So that's how I'll be splitting these wires in this uh, videos coming up. So now we're gonna show you how to wire a set of speakers in parallel. Now this is method one, there's two ways of doing it in parallel. I'm gonna show you method one. Okay, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna connect these speakers in parallel. Now I'm only gonna do one channel, I'm gonna do the left-hand channel of the car audio, and I'm gonna do the left-hand channel of the Oh My Fi, and obviously the right-hand channel will be exactly the same, but just to you know, make it less complicated, we're just gonna do one side of your output of your amplifiers like your car amp or your uh, ohm amplifier output uh, we're just going to do the left hand channel of both so as we go through that i'll talk you through that so as you can see they're both left hand speakers uh it's like i say we're doing the left hand so we've got two speakers and we're going to wire them up in parallel so we'll start off uh with the negative of the left hand side output of your amplifier going to the negative of your first left speaker then we're going to connect the positive of that output of the amplifier to the positive of the first, like I say, your first left-hand speaker. Now we're going to go up to the second left-hand speaker now. Uh, don't forget this is just on the left channel still. We're going to do the negative of the left-hand of your output of your amplifier or your edge unit of the car going to the negative of the left-hand speaker. And we're going to do the positive now of that amplifier output going to the positive of another left-hand, your second left-hand speaker. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do pretty much the same as what you do with an ohm hi-fi. So with an ohm hi-fi, we're just going to do left-hand channel. Don't forget, two speakers connected in parallel to the left-hand side. So the negative goes to speaker number one from the negative output of your amplifier. And now we're going to connect the positive of that left-hand output of the amplifier going to the positive of your first speaker on your ohm hi-fi. And now we're going to do connect up the second speaker. This is in parallel, so the negative the left hand channel goes to the negative of the second speaker which is going to be on the left hand side don't forget and we're going to connect the positive from the output your amplifier going to the positive of that second speaker so this is just doing one channel uh, you know the left hand channel or both but two co speakers connected in both cases either the car audio and the oh my fi you're going to have two speakers connected to one channel so them two speakers are connected in parallel Right, that was method one. Now, this, that, that's the most common. This is method two of uh, wiring in parallel. A little bit different, as you'll see. Okay, we're going to connect in parallel again. It's going to be slightly different now. Rather than connecting both speakers to the left hand, we're going to do the left hand channel again, uh, both on the car audio and the uh, ohm hi fi. But uh, instead of having both speakers connected to the left hand channel with two lots of wires, one coming from one speaker to the left hand output of the amplifier and one set of wires or leads, shall I say, coming from the, the other speaker connecting up to the amplifier. We're gonna kind of daisy chain these two together, and you'll see what I mean uh, as the video progresses now. So what we're gonna do here, first of all, we're gonna take um, the positive out, and that's gonna to go to the positive of the first speaker on the left-hand channel. I'm just moving it about a bit, just to make it a little bit easier to follow what's happening here. And we're gonna take the negative from the left-hand side of the amplifier, going to the left-hand uh, speaker, the first speaker and what we're going to do now we're going to daisy chain we're going to drag the negative here another lead uh, a negative we're going to connect a negative of that speaker to the negative of our second speaker don't forget this is still on the left hand channel we're just doing one channel here so let's daisy chain them together rather than it coming back to the amplifier it's actually coming from the other speaker uh, it's still connected in parallel and we're going to do the same with a positive rather than coming back down to the amplifier we're going to take it from the speaker and we're going to cross it over to the second speaker from speaker one to speaker two and that's kind of daisy chained them so um, yeah rather than bringing the lead all the way back up to the amplifier you can just take it from the last connection which was the left hand speaker we're going to do it exactly the same with the audio hi-fi at home your own hi-fi we're going to do the negative there to the first speaker 
just move it out of the way there so you can see it a bit clearer and then we're going to take the positive of the left hand output of the amplifier and connect it to the positive of that first left hand speaker and we're going to daisy chain that speaker across pretty much the same as we did that cardio so the negative there goes to the negative of the second speaker and we're going to do the positive for self uh, sorry the same uh, this saves like i say bringing up another lead all the way back to the amplifier if the second speaker is pretty close to the first speaker uh, this would be the reason for doing this and just to show you that these are just one actual like twin cable they would kind of be you know, together there and jump across as so so that's another way of connecting up in parallel uh, rather than the previous one where we actually took both cables directly to the amplifier output you can daisy chain one speaker to the other uh, and these are still connected in parallel yeah, as you can see there, that's a slightly different way of uh, wiring up in parallel. And that would probably suit people that's got the amplifier, say, at the back of the room here. And their first set of speakers are halfway into the room. So they're going to run a cable halfway into the room to that set of speakers. Then rather than running another cable from the very far speakers all the way back up to the amplifier, they could tag it off. They could daisy chain it to that first set of speakers, saving some cable there. Uh, so another way of doing it. And that'd be the same in your car as well, really, like where you've got the... Uh, amplifier here and your first set of speakers is say halfway down the car rather than running the lead all the way from the rear to the second set of speakers you could daisy chain it as i showed you in that video to the first set of speakers saving you some cable uh, and a bit of mucking about maybe etc but you know two ways of wiring it in parallel you take your choice with them so this next video now is going to add to wire the speakers up in series now still got the positive and negative as you'll see in this video i just want to explain this extra wire that's going to be involved uh, you're going to have your positive and negative, but you're going to have a link wire. Now, this link wire can be any wire. You can you just pull a strip of wire off your twin cable or just normal wire. It doesn't have to be any colour. It can be, you know, it can have a red stripe on it or anything like that. It's just called a link wire. It's going to link one speaker to the other, as you'll see in this video. Okay, now we're going to connect in series. Uh, this is a little bit different, a little bit, I, I think it can be a little bit messy kind of thing, but uh, you see what you think. So we'll run the video. Uh, and we're just doing the left hand channel, just one channel with normal. So we start off with a car audio. We're going to do the negative of the speaker output to the negative of the first speaker. Then we're going to do the positive output and we're going to connect that to the second speaker positive, like so. And now we've got to connect these two speakers up together in series. So we kind of have a link wire. I'm going to make it blue. It's, you, can, you can have any way you like, really, but I'm just showing you a different color here, blue. And that links the positive of the output of the first speaker to the negative. Uh, of speaker number two so uh, it's fairly straightforward there to see that we're going to do exactly the same now with the audio hi-fi negative output to the first speaker then we of your amplifier then we're going to do the positive output of your amplifier uh, going to the positive of the second speaker now we've got to put these speakers together in series so we're going to do another blue wire like I did before just so you can see and we're going to connect the blue wire from the positive of the left speaker of the first left speaker to the negative of the second left speaker so connecting them two speakers up like that and that's putting these speakers in series uh, as you can see uh, you just have to run one wire between two speakers then one wire to each individual speaker from the amplifier now this can be a little bit messy i suppose i don't know really but um, this is how you would wire up a speaker in series and this is the only way to do it there isn't another way uh, as there is with uh, wiring up in parallel. Okay, I hope you kind of got the gist of them videos. You may want to replay them again. Any questions, then obviously uh, put a uh, question down at the bottom. Any thoughts and uh, any of my videos, always put a, a comment down. I read every comment. I don't always get back to it. And if anyone's got any um, videos that I could do, that I've, you know, equipment I've got here that I could do it with, I do try my best to do it, you know, depending on how popular I think it may be also and what other things I'm doing around the house. Um, okay, the very last bit now I'm going to show you it's just going to put this chart up here on the screen. And this is just how to work out, you know, you looked at your back of your amplifier and it's going to give you the minimum uh, and the maximum you can put in impedance wise, you know, speaker wise into the back of your amplifier. And for instance, uh, if you're going to wire these speakers up, we look at the very top in series. Uh, how do you work out by adding these speakers, you know, what, imp you know, what impedance do they kind of combine by putting these in series? Uh, all you've got to do is add the two speaker uh, ohm ratings together. So I've done a couple of examples there. So speaker set one is, uh, with a pair of speakers set one is four ohms. 
and the other set is uh, 4 ohms as well. You just do 4 ohms plus 4 ohms equals 8 ohms in total. So if you're winding them speakers up in series, two 4 ohm speakers, two pairs of 4 ohm speakers, each channel is going to come in at 8 ohms. So, uh, you know, your amplifier is rated 4 to 16 ohms. Uh, then you're fine, you know, you're well within that, you've got 8 ohms there. So the second example is, uh, six, sorry, speaker set 1 is 8 ohms, but speaker set 2 is 6 ohms. Uh, that's going to work out at 14 ohms, so, you know, it ducks under that maximum of 16 ohms, so you're within the bracket of 8 to 16 ohms, uh, sorry, 4 to 16 ohms on the back of your amplifier, or most amplifiers anyway. Now we're going to go down to the bottom bit here. This is where um, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, there is calculators online to work this out. It depends really. Um, okay, so we're going to write these speakers in parallel. Now you can write, say, why these speakers either way. I've got two parallel videos there, two ways of doing it, and they're both going to work out exactly the same. So for instance, we're going to take the same kind of uh, rating speakers again. One set of speakers is rated at four ohms, and the other, you know, second set is rated at four ohms as well. They have to do four times four, which is 16, divided by four plus four. So it's, you know, each set of speakers, four plus four. So that's 16 divided by eight equals two. So it's two ohms. So if you're going to wire two four ohm speakers in parallel, they're going to give you an impedance of two ohms. Now you can see that two ohms is ducked right underneath. It's actually half the minimum that the amplifier, the amplifiers I've showed you would require, and most amplifiers would say. So that would not be a good way of doing it. You know, don't use two four ohm speakers uh, wide in parallel, two sets of speakers wide in parallel. As you know, you're going to do some damage to your amplifier there. So be very careful with that. Uh, you know, a lot of speakers these days are four ohms. So, you know, if you've got two sets of speakers, four ohms, then your best method is to wire them up in series rather than parallel. Now we're going to take the second example uh, that I did, which was an eight ohm set of speakers wired up with a 16 ohm, sorry, a six ohm set of speakers in parallel. So it's eight times six is 48 divided by eight plus six. So it's 48 divided by 14, where it's at 3.3 and that's 3.3 ohms. So it's still ducking underneath that four ohms. Uh, so yeah, you know, be careful there, definitely be careful. Um, you know, low volumes and that probably going to get away with it. But, you know, if you start cranking up the volume, etc., you know, you could be doing some damage there to your amplifier. So there again is, you know, probably better not to do that. Uh, better off looking for, you know, if you're going to wind them up in parallel, getting two 8 ohm speakers and wind them up in parallel. And if you do two 8 ohms with the calculations, like I say, there's online calculators, that would work out at 4 ohms and that would be... Uh, the bottom of the range between 4 and 16 ohms that these particular amplifiers are letting you use. So just something to bear in mind when using speakers in uh, parallel there. Okay, so I hope that video, hopefully you kind of got the gist of it and you, you know, understood. It's hard putting across sometimes what you're trying to say that's maybe helped out a few people, you know, thinking about wiring their hi-fi indoors in series in parallel with an extra set of speakers to an amplifier that's only got one output. And the same with your car, you know, your head unit, your main amplifier's only got the one output. And you're thinking of adding some extra speakers. Now, this is only for an extra pair, like two pairs of speakers. I know some people, like with cars, etc., may have three sets of speakers, etc. So, you know, go online and just double check these calculators of what speaker impedance you've got. If you're going to wire three in series or three in parallel, you know, what would it come out as? And would that be within the, uh, you know, capabilities of your amplifier? Okay, so I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.